It's more valuable than gold. Incredible. Amazing. Its continents, climates, nature, its creatures, animals, humans, journeys and destinations, land and sky, sea and air. Sophisticated, cosmopolitan, Original, people and cultures, ceremonies and dances, rituals and music. <laughs> Treasures and icons, its history, landmarks, modern, ancient, exotic. Beautiful places, fascinating lives, incredible faces. Live it, see it, and share it. Thousands of stories all in your living room. DocuBox, come and discover the world with us. Chilean Patagonia, my home in this new adventure. For months, I went to the most breathtaking destinations on our southern lands and proudly traveled through them from the beginning to the end. From the beginning, my intentions were clear, to camp in one of Chile's glaciers that can be reached by land and experience the sensation of climbing on ice through one of the cracks of the Exploradores Glacier. Everything is set. Travel with me in this exciting chapter to discover one of the wonders of the world. Wonders of the world. I began my tour of the most southern lands of our country at least two weeks in advance from Santiago. I looked for a 4x4 van that I took to the Valcameda airport, the starting place of my journey through the Chilean Patagonia. The crossing encompasses an ice and region, which limits the north to the Los Lagos region. Argentina to the east, Magallanes and Chilean Antarctica to the south, and the Pacific Ocean to the west. My goal was to go towards the southern end until reaching Villa O'Higgins, which is located 500 kilometers from Balmaceda Airport, and is recognized as the last point on the Austro Road. I continued the south to the north route towards my final goal, the Exploradores Glacier. 
we will take the Austral Road to go to Campos del Hielo. Campos del Hielo is divided into two, Northern Campos del Hielo and Southern Campos del Hielo. Except for the last part, the Austral Highway can be traveled by car. And the last part is cut by the Mitchell Fjord. It has to be crossed on a barge. It has three daily schedules at 10 a.m., at noon, and at 6 p.m. It's free. They don't charge you for transporting your car. Austro Road is all connected. We can get to the 6 p.m. barge. We're going to arrive about half an hour before, so we'll be able to continue seeing Chile's beauties in wonders of the world. I noticed there's no public transport from Guayaque to Villa Ojaquim. That's why walking backpack travelers choose to ask for a ride. I decided to stop to share for a while with some of these adventurers. Look at that group. There are three women and a man. This is typical in the Austro Road. It's full of backpackers. People won't give you a ride? No, we've been waiting since 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? What time is it? Almost 6 p.m. You're just backpacking to the south with joy. We've been traveling for two months, two months from Spain, from Chile. Yes, I'm from Santiago. I've done it for a month. No, one month backpacking and you're traveling together? No, we've done it for ourselves. So to keep us company, we got together. So do you like Chile or Patagonia? We love it. We also love Chile. Chileans treat us very nice because we're traveling with Kurt Surfing. <laughs> Chilean people host a traveler, offer us their house and teach us their customs. We spent Christmas with a Chilean family. We spent New Year's Eve at Valparaiso. And everything and everyone has been with people we've met. And they've treated us very, very well. Let's see if they stop. Let's hitchhike. <laughs> on the rear, on the rear. One or two, please. Please. Oh, no luck. I'll leave. I wish you good luck. Bye bye, good luck. Good luck. All the best to you. Thank you. Another option is to travel by motor vehicle, from Coyhaique to Cochrane, or from Caleta to Tortel. There you can take a provincial bus to Puerto Yungay and cross the Via Oegens by ferry. We have arrived at Puerto Yungay. Let's start to know this a bit. The first thing we see are tourists bicycling. So there's a tourist riding a bike. I believe that from Cochrane to Puerto Yungay, during these two hours, without exaggerating, we saw at least, on average, 80 or 100 tourists riding bicycles. The Austro Road is visited a lot by world adventurers. This barge is from the government. It's not a private barge. I don't have to go to a ticket office to buy a ticket. The barge comes and goes three times a day, from Puerto Yungay to Villa O'Hagins. You don't need money. They don't ask for an ID or anything. One goes on board. The barge has three schedules, at 10 a.m., at noon, and at 6 p.m. I got off the barge and began my journey through the spectacular landscapes of Chile's southern part until arriving at a town that just at the entrance was fascinating. Villa O'Higgins welcomed me with its rustic beauty, its wooden houses, Chilean flags fluttering in the wind under a clear sky and clean forests. This town marks the end of the southern Chilean road, but the beginning of my adventure. I would dare to say that Villa Huygens must be one of the most beautiful cities or towns, villages, 
that I've had the opportunity to see in Chile. There is no trash on the streets. Almost all the houses have one floor. The spaces are well distributed. It's very clean. A Chilean city with flags everywhere. It's located at the feet of a wonderful mountain. It has clear skies. The houses are made of wood. Villa O'Higgins is worth in every aspect. Villa O'Higgins' tranquility was a perfect resting place for the night. And to cross at sunrise through the Campos del Yellow Fields, my next challenge in this area. Campos de Hielo is divided in two, the northern section, located in the Aysén region, and the southern section, located in the regions Aysén, Magallanes, and Santa Cruz in Argentina. Together, they form the world's third largest ice extension, after the Antarctic and Greenland. It's 7.30 a.m., and what we are going to do now is to take a boat to go to Campos del Hielo Sur. We are seven kilometers away from Villa O'Higgins. The jetty is seven kilometers away. Roads don't exist here. Boats are the only means of transportation here that stop at different points along the banks of Lake O'Higgins. For almost three hours, we'll say from Puerto Bajamodes to Candelario Mancilla, where many continue their expeditions with a trek to Mount Fitzroy, also known as Cerro Chalten. My goal instead is Bernardo O'Higgins National Park. We are going to go from here towards Bernardo O'Higgins Park, that is the largest national park in the country. There's no bigger park than that one we are going to enter now. But we are not going directly to the park, because this boat makes a stop in the middle. All the boats that come in and out move through the canals, are also used as a means of transport, so that people can transfer to another boat and can move from village to village, because there are no roads. Everything's done through the fjords, the rivers and the sea. We arrived at Candelario Mancilla and the captain told us, guys, you have an hour to see the place. This was my opportunity to walk through the border crossing trails and see what I could find in this corner of Chile, on the shores of Campo de Hielo Sur. Hi, hello. We are in a little known border crossing, very remote. It's terrestrial pedestrian crossing. Here's where the check, the passport. Carabineros de Chile, sub police station, Via O'Higgins. Hernan Merino Correa property. How does it feel to be so far away? Yes, it's remote, but it has its pros and cons. What are the pros and cons? The cons is to be far away from the family, to miss our parents, our children, our wives, for those of us who are married. But the pros are being in a relaxed place. The place is beautiful, and you can't find this everywhere. It is a privilege to be here. It's quiet. Yes, we don't have police problems because there are no population. We have only one lady, Mrs. Justa, who is old, and her son, and 13 persons living far from here. 
We have no big police problem. Of course, this is a border control. A border control, exactly. Perfect, sir. I congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I congratulate you. Hope you do fine. Thank you. See you. We are leaving. Congratulations. Great job. Thanks. We leave. We set off on the waters of Lake O'Higgins, and we go towards the glacier that has the same name, Glacier O'Higgins, a huge glacier. In fact, it's the fourth largest glacier of the Patagonia. They say it's similar to Perito Moreno, which is another great glacier, but in Argentina. But this one belongs to us. In these wonderful waters, we continue our tour through one of the most beautiful places on the globe, the Chilean Patagonia. What you see is part of Campos de Yellow Sur. Campos de Yellow is a vast area. It is the third largest ice block in the world. And this is one of Campos de Yellow Sur's glaciers. Before my eyes, impressive, unsoiled, pure white, the O'Higgins Glacier, in a magnificent natural setting, far more than I could have imagined. We're going to surround it to get as close as possible to this giant iceberg, the O'Higgins Glacier. This is hard as rock, you see? It's very hard. Notice that this little iceberg is a grain of sand compared to the rest. But it yet measures about 20, 25 meters. And it's very hard. Like all great glaciers in the world, O'Higgins is constantly moving, it's melting, and large blocks of ice break off from its walls, which in my opinion are part of the incredible spectacle and gives us the chance to approach to such a short distance to this iceberg. I was dazzled by the intensity of its colors, an extraordinary sight, an incalculable beauty. I then went to the nearest urban area, Caleta Tortel, located 150 kilometers away, to be able to see the catwalk city. We started visiting Caleta Tortel, and as it says in the books, there are a lot of catwalks of Cipres de la Huatecas. And down there are all the homes of all the people who live here. In the middle of the Austro Road, along the Baker River.
A long time ago, this town dedicated to fishing. There are in fact a lot of fishing boats here, but the truth is that today, because of Tortel's beauty, it is mostly dedicated to tourism, with many accommodation options. From bed and breakfast, that cost 60 or 70,000 pesos per person per day, to camping, that cost 1,500 pesos per person. So there are prices for people looking for more comfort, or for backpackers who only need a small space to put their tent. I think Tortel is a nice postcard. It's a place to stop to take pictures, eat something, and continue the route through Carretera Austral. This is very small. It has almost 600 inhabitants. You can visit in 25 or 30 minutes, take pictures on these wonderful cypress walkways, and continue to Carretera Austral. And that's what we're going to do. We stop to take a picture and we continue our journey in wonders of the world. I left Caleta Tortel to continue my excursion, 244 kilometers north towards Puerto Rio Tranquilo. A trip that seems to be an exceptional natural temple with abundant and leafy greens. What's better than to learn about these lands than with a local inhabitant, a Patagonian, a woods craftsman who coexists in harmony with rain and who taught me the importance of sharing happiness? This is Don Marcelo. I'm sure he'll make you smile. How are you, Marcelo? What do you live on? On wood. Do you sell wood? No, I make wood for Margarita, because these are not our fields. How much wood do you sell in a year or a month? How do you do it? Depends on the weather. Because one has to consider the weather. The more snow, the frost, the better, because the terrain is firm, perfect. It's soft, one can horse ride. But where do you get the wood? I have to walk an hour from here to the skirt of that hill. Otherwise, I'd walk 30 minutes to find few sticks that are left. Leftovers. Leftovers. They're already dry. Tell me, do you like Santiago? No, I don't like it at all. Why not? Because there is cramped one on top of another. Here we have so much space, so cramped one on top of another, 